one of the parts of your story was that your mother was not around. Yeah. Your mother gave birth to you and took you straight to me. And you had only seen your mother in maybe funeral here and there. Mm-hmm. Eh? Explain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I saying it right? Well, no. Not, yeah. My mom left me a few days after I was born with the May and she came back and Miss Funeral. Yeah, she came back on Miss, Miss funeral. funeral. Yeah, that was 15 years later. 15 years later. Never have I seen her in any picture, in any... She dropped you a few days after. Yeah, and then she... And came left. Back, left and came back 15 years later yeah, yeah. on May's funeral. Mm-hmm. I think that, that was not hard in a sense that... I always knew me as my mom. I knew that someone had dropped me here and she was not supposed to and I'm not liked and I'm being hated for that. But there's someone who truly loves me. Mm. But when me died, I needed to know my mom. I needed to know her. So we met at the funeral and my aunt, my aunt that I was staying with, introduced us. She was like, to me, this is your mom. Mm. We looked at each other. We didn't know what to say to each other. And she was like, hi. I'm like, hi, are you okay? I'm good. Cool. I don't even know when she left. That was the only conversation and then she left. And now you reunited because you got kicked out of your auntie's house. Yes, yes. She actually came. <laughs> My mom is a very funny character. She actually came to pick me up. And like, you would fight with my mom today. She does not address things. She would just overwrite them and come in with a new topic and you'd move on like that. So she came, she's like, hi. Yeah, we're going to my place. Oh, cool, cool. We're going to a place. I'm like, probably when we get there, we have to sit down for like three hours and unpack. Why don't we know each other? Why are we not staying together? What happened? Mm. Where were you in the 15 years? We need to talk about that. Mm-mm, not with my mom. Not with your mother. Mm-mm. So it's like, yeah, we we going to my place. We got to this four roomed house, um, and the first thing she tells me is, "I'm going to this place to the tavern. She's an alcoholic. Mm. I'm going to the tavern. This is where you'll get me bring my meds." She told me she had this disease that she's drinking meds every day for. So bring my meds there. Mm. That's it. So every day she would go there. We would not even get to spend an hour together. So I'll just go for five minutes, look for her, give her meds, go back home, yeah. and I'll sleep alone. I lived alone. But for me then, I did not realize the psychological impact that had on me because I was just relieved I'm out of my aunt's house. You know, but it, 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 was, it was dealing with me. Or not. It was dealing said, with yeah. you, yeah. Your aunt said some very... Um, Hurtful things mm. when you left. What did she say about you and your mother mm. and how your life will be? Yeah. She said, I'll amount to nothing. Um, I'll end up like my mom. Mm. Yeah. So she had left me for 15 years. Now she's coming to fetch me. What do I think will happen to me? Also, without her, I mean, reminding me that she's the one who helped me to take care of me. I would have been nothing without her. Mm. Now that I'm stepping out of her house, house, definitely she can assure me. And you know what? I must never come back there, but there's there's nothing else out there for me. Mm. When you think of that now, how does it land on you? Um, I think it's, I think she was just angry. Now, now I kind of understand now I can understand where she was, uh, but also because of what she believed about life, about God, she thought um, the destiny of someone else can be in someone else's hands. Mm, yeah. You know, that that's how far she knew. Yeah. She thought because she's the one in position to give money to my well-being, then my life's destiny definitely was in her hands. Mm. That's what she believed. Mm. But I grew up and I realized that it, it is God who creates a person. Yeah. Yeah. It is God who determines where a person will end up. Mm. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. And your uh, relationship with your mom, there was nothing there, but the time when you were staying at her place was short-lived. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. do, you, do you laugh about it now? I do. <laughs> so, yeah, I do laugh about it now. Um, cause I mean, I, I feel like she, she should have told me, yeah. you know, yeah. she should have told me that, no, this is not my place. Hey, you niggas were figures. Hey. Like, you are who again? And I'm like, how my mom brought me here. I was like, no, I, I brought your mom this room to take care of it while I'm still away. And now I'm, I'm trying to tell her that I'm coming back. She's not picking up. And on the day the owner of the room came back, my mom disappeared and I didn't see her for years after that. So I don't know, she could have just told me, but having the many encounters that I've had with her, I get that she's that kind of a person. Yeah. How is your relationship with your mom now? So after that time when you didn't mm -hmm. see her, when did you see her again? I saw we just met randomly at the street. Wow. Yeah, we just five years later, yeah. two years later. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we just randomly met at the streets and she just greeted me the way she would. Hi. Oh, good to see you. Sharp, sharp. And then um COVID hit. My mom asked for my numbers from whoever she got them from and she contacted me. She asked for help. Uh, she's got nowhere to stay. She wants a place to stay and food and stuff. And I was working well then. And yeah, we found her a place to stay and we we got reunited. Um, yeah, until... No, yes, that went on for, for a while. Now she's got my little sister who's now attending school. So I felt very obliged to help mm. and to be in her life. Mm. And yeah, um, of course, in a relationship like that, I will also be needing some things. Mm. And when it's my turn to be served, she would not pitch up. Sure. Yeah. And on simple things, an example would be when I asked her, so she bought a machine, a washing machine I didn't have. So I was like, oh, um, please wash my clothes for me. And then she put them there for a while and I came back and I'm like, how? Oh. So it's like, no, Mina, my machine is for business. I wash clothes with money. Sure. And I'm paying this person's rent. I am, yeah. The other thing is I, I would give her money to pay rent. She would buy alcohol. Mm. They would have a, no place to stay. Now I, I'm be forced to pay the rent twice. Mm. So there had to be very strong boundaries that I put for a relationship to work. Also for me to win my sister's life because I felt like everything she was doing was just pushing me away. Mm. And it was not my sister's fault. So it was, it was very hard. It was so hard that during the Lovola. Yeah. Um, so I, I asked her that, would you be there? She was like, yes, oh yeah, of course. Then when the day is closer, I call her. She's like, yeah, so remember, this is the date in mm, in. She's mm. like, so you're telling me through the phone. I'm like, but you knew, I told her, I came to you face to face to come tell you. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do now. You know what? I want nothing to do with that anymore. I tried to put other old people to speak to her. She didn't come. Yeah, she didn't come. So that has been one of the thorns that I've been dealing with in life because she would come when she needs something and I would I would not be able to say no. But that's the thing. When I help her, I become emotionally invested and I will need a very simple thing for her to do and she will, she will just not want to do it. Yeah. So it's a one-way kind of a relationship we have which which is which is very hard. 